of the truth. Go to God. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. lot to take away okay so the thing is that now you're introduced to it man right you're introduced to a new mindset okay either you embrace it or you don't either you go home tonight and you practice it or you don't it's really up to you as an individual do you want to be better right because you can have the same mindset uh, and go you know what that was great but man it was hard everything is hard at first everything okay but some of you guys are, are getting it, right? Because you're applying the fundamentals and you're understanding the concept. If you find yourself having a hard time today, well, that's the process of learning, right? That's the process of developing yourself, right? And even if you got it today, well, there's still some things you need to work on. There was nobody in here that was perfect. Everybody is not perfect. And we have to train and we have to, to work on things. If you find yourself not hitting shit today, that's because you didn't understand the first teaching, which was holds, right? That's why I put you on holds in the first place. So you have to know your holds. If you don't understand your holds, then well, we can drive the gun all day long and you're not gonna hit the target. Understand, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. I'm putting you on a three inch fucking box, right? With speed. So if you find yourself blowing it out of the area, it's because you're trying to mimic speed when your speed and accuracy isn't there. So it should be a shock to you that, man, I can't even fucking hit a three inch box at seven meters because you're outrunning your headlights. You know what the holds are. You know how to do it. The first drill when you just stood there, everybody hit the three inch, right? Anybody had any problems? But then we started adding what? Layers, right? Layers of teaching. But did we go, but did we go away from that first teaching? Holds. You can't hit the fucking mark, man. Then you need to work on your holds. If you can't drive a gun and hit your mark, well, you need to forget about the drive and just work on your holds. I understand. Okay. I don't want you to get frustrated, guys. All right? It's about learning today. Everything's hard at first, right? Even for my experienced guys, right? Everything is hard at first when you reprogram certain fundamentals, okay? I'm not saying today that the high compress is it. I'm saying that allows me mobility, right? It allows me to move and shoot. And I told you from day, from the get-go, that a combat course, a combat carbine course, is about moving and shooting because I have to move to what? Cover and concealment, right? If, if we're out here, and the target's right here, and I'm, I'm right here, and that's my threat. You think I'm going to stand here? Then why do we train like that? Hmm? Because in the military, you know, anybody read the book On Killing? Hmm? Grossman talked about in World War II, they used to lie, lay down uh, in a static position. Right, and they had the pits where they had to shoot these big ass fucking bullseye targets. If you ever work the pits, is Marines or soldiers are underneath there, and then they, they shoot this target and they pull down the target and they plug the targets where you shot and they bring it back up and they lower it back down. Right, we did that in sniper training and stuff like that, but that's how they used to work in World War II. They shot these big ass bullseye targets when the uh, when the Americans confronted the Germans for the first time on the battlefield, it was a human being. It wasn't a bullseye's target. So statistically, majority of the shots were over the Germans' heads because the, the soldiers could not make that mental 
breakthrough to take life because they shoot at fucking big bullseye targets, right? So you look at the targets nowadays, does it shape like a human being? Hmm? Does it have faces of women and children on it with a gun on their hands? Because what we're doing is we're desensitizing ourselves to killing, okay? So the way, what I'm saying is the way you train is the way you're going to react in a conflict. Because that split second to go, oh my God, as a human, not a bullseye target, it's your life. Because you can't make that mental break because you didn't train the way that, I'm telling you, the, the, a, a combat experience guy to train, then, then you will never understand it. Unless you're out in a gunfight, you will never know, right? So you have to train that way. There's no hesitation. And you have to train your body to relax. So if I talk about a gun as a stench of your hand and I put the gun in your hands and you're doing all this, well, now it's not a normal movement for you. A normal movement, sir, is you standing there just like that and bringing your gun to your eye line. That's it. Nothing more. Okay? And if you find yourself kicking back in recoil, then you need to let go of the muscles that's pushing you back. I demonstrated with Jason. Right? If he, he throws out that drive hand, he's going to get rocked back. For my Marine, right, who, when we talked about today, right, he's a great shooter and, and I respect what he's done. But the thing was, he swerved off to the target like this, toes, toes. Instead of heels and toes on line, he went like this. And just that little change, he was able to hand a recoil. Right? Am I right? That gun. You're, you're doing this every single time because you're too tense. Relax the muscles. Relax the muscles. Think about the cadence. Count to me one to five. One, two, three, four. You keep that accuracy? Okay. Count it. At the top of that line. One. Keep the accuracy. Okay. You're not. You're not keeping the accuracy. You know your holds, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Keep it. You were shooting too low. All right. So what happened there? All right. You you were keeping the cadence, and then on around four, you lost that cadence. No. Yeah. Do it again. You have your number one box at the top, right? Relax the shoulders. Where is your dot? And stop you tilting your body forward. Time. On it. Go. I'm doing the, the bottom part. Ah, on four, you're yeah. dropping it. Yep. Every time on four. All right, bring it back in. Concentrate on your cadence. Push. You're losing that hold. You're losing your hold. Four is just kicking your ass. All right. So hold, hold. You know your holds, right? Okay. Number one box here. So he was doing this and he tensed up so he rocked back, right? But if I just take a leg and I just throw here and I relax the body, did you find a difference in that? Very much so. So even with my experience guys with military background, I respect, but there's a different methodology, okay? And the thing, why do I take this methodology? Dude, I was trained by a lot of countries and a lot of military commando forces, right? And I draw out what is useful. And I write it down like some of you guys are writing down the notes. I write it down. And basically I come back and revisit when I'm ready to learn that again. Understand? And you're going to find like tomorrow when we talk about grip. Yeah, we know how to grip a pistol, but do you? Do you? You see? Do you know how to grip a rifle? Because some of you guys are up in the chicken wing position. Do you know how to uh, stabilize that platform? Right? It's not just about pulling it out and shooting, it's about speed, right? Because I take your distance, what I take away? Time. So you have to react faster, and the only way you can react faster is what? You have to allow your body to move that weapon. Not the weapon around your body. Your body has to move that weapon, just like if you're in a fight. If I tell you, hey man, throw me a punch across... You can only deliver that cross with power if you apply what? The core. the core mechanics, 
All right, if I come up and I do this, yeah, yeah, it'll probably hurt you. But if I drive my, my core, my body, I drive with speed and speed is power. Okay, same thing with a gun. I can move the gun like this. Yeah, I can, I can move the mic. I can move to Jason, right? But see how I unlock my, or I can move the mic and drive to Jason. See the difference. If you apply the mechanics of your body and you apply the path of a gun, so if I know my path of guns here, right? So if I see you as a threat, see, I'm already on you. If Mike is already on him, see, everything's already lined. See? So that's why I have to practice that path. Because that gun has to land on my shoulder pocket in this presentation. Because if I have this presentation, she's a threat. Now I can drive. I'm already on her. There's no aiming. Okay? It's a react. A reaction. So we're at this range. If you're bringing up your gun and you're trying to find that red dot. Well, I didn't teach you properly. Okay? Because at this distance, it's not about aiming. It's positioning your body into a certain point. Make sense? Okay. Now, obviously, you do have to aim, right? That's why we're, we're going to three inches and two inches and eventually one inch. You want to aim, you want to, but you want to be able to drive that mechanic, that body, to get that gun there as fast as you can. And then you can slow down and aim, I guess. Understand? And in time, that slow aim becomes fast. And it becomes more accurate if you understand your cadence. If you're able to swallow your pride and look at those targets and go, man, I'm fucking missing the target. All right? If you're able to slow it down. If you can't swallow your pride, you're never getting any better. Understand this. Life is a process of learning. And today you learn new things. It's up to you if you want to accept it or not. If you want to absorb it and you want to put it into your life. Look at your world. Look at your threat. If you're a civilian, when would you carry a rifle? Okay, so Mike, when would you employ your rifle, man? Um, bad happening around the house. Right, when shit hits the fan, he, he needs range, right? He needs distance, he knows the distance, he knows how to gauge uh, distance and read uh, the distance in order to understand his holds. Yeah, right? So you take that weapon and you apply it to whatever your life is. If you're a police officer, well, you're, you're probably using this to save your life or... What? Stopping evil, right? The thing is, if you don't understand your holes and you don't understand the minute angle in your gun, then you'll never understand your offset. You never understand that. So you have to get the, the data first and then develop that data and you have to record that data. What was today? What was the humidity today? What was the atmosphere? What was it like? What ballistic was on you? What grain of bullet was I using? And that needs to be recorded. How did I perform today? Was I injured? Was I tired? That needs to be recorded. Because how I perform in the Philippines is different from how I perform here. How I perform in, in a higher elevation like Colorado is different from how I perform here. <clears throat> right? So you have to understand your body and the performance of it. I train with heart rate monitors all the time. I know my heart rate. I know what, what I can perform at. Okay? And that's just a deeper understanding of who you are and who you are. Any questions out of me today?